Hello and a very good morning. You're watching the Breakfast News on Rajya Sabha Television with me, Frank Pereira. Let's begin with today's headlines. Today, BJP National Executive meet to begin today. Meet to discuss preparations for upcoming assembly polls. Party also likely to pass economic political resolutions. PDP-BJP alliance in Jammu and Kashmir on the brink of collapse. Deadlock as BJP acts tough on PDP's conditions. Sources indicate that the alliance may be all but over. Paris attack suspect Salah Abdeslam wounded and arrested in a dramatic raid in Brussels. Four others also arrested for aiding the suspect. French President Francois Hollande expects Abdeslam to be extradited to France. Turkey and EU reach landmark deal on refugees. EU and Turkey reach landmark deal on migrant crisis. Refugees will be returned to Turkey from Sunday in exchange for aid and political concessions. And England and New Zealand win their respective matches at the ICC World T20. New Zealand beat arch-rivals Australia in a low-scoring contest and England beat South Africa in a match that went down to the wire. Well, at a time when five states are headed for polls and there is a heated debate on nationalism and reservations, the BJP's national executive is set for a two-day meet starting today. Top party brass, brass including Prime Minister uh, Narendra Modi, Amit Shah and senior leaders and ministers will participate in the deliberations. The party will pass two resolutions, one political and the other economic. While the pro-poor and pro-village budget will be at the centre of the economic resolution, the political resolution will deal with various current issues. The event will kick off this evening with a speech from party president Amit Shah after a meeting of national office bearers of the party. The event will end with an address by Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Sunday evening. And some more political news now. Government formation talks between the PDP and the BJP seem to have hit a fresh roadblock. BJP's Ram Madhav said that uh, the stalemate that existed earlier is still continuing as the government can't be formed on the basis of conditions. Madhav also clarified that the BJP will not consider any new demands till the time the coalition government is sworn in the state. The PDP has also indicated that the back-channel talks between the two sides have not yielded any result. A day after PDP Chief Mehbooba Mufti met BJP President Amit Shah. नहीं पहली बात तो कोई और डिमांड तो मंजूर है ही नहीं पहली बात दूसरी बात हमने जैसा कहा जो कुछ भी और एडिशनली करना है ऐसे अपेक्षा है वे सारी चीजें सरकार बनने के बाद बातचीत के द्वारा संभव है हर राज्य सरकार को केंद्र से बात करके जो आवश्यक चीजों को मांगने का अधिकार होता है बट सरकार को कंडीशन पर बनाना संभव नहीं है While the Congress government in Uttarakhand plunged into a political crisis on Friday, the Speaker disallowed a dis division on the state finance bill when the members gathered, triggering utter chaos in the Assembly. The BJP claimed that nine rebel Congress leaders had crossed over in the House of 70 members. Earlier reports said that the BJP planned to attempt negative voting that would have scuttled the passage of the budget bill, leading to a fall of the government. The rebels reportedly include top Congress leaders like former Chief Minister Vijay Bahuguna, Harak Singh Rawat and Satpal Maharaj. Meanwhile, in a move that will hit the common man, the government today slashed interest rates payable on small savings including PPF and Kisan Vikas Patra in an attempt to align uh, them closer to market rates. As a part of its February 16th decision to revise interest rates on small savings every quarter, the interest rate on public provident fund scheme will be cut to 8.1% for April 1st to June 30th from 8.7% at present. Similarly, the interest rate on Kisan Vikas Patra will be cut to 7.8% from 8.7%. The popular five-year national savings certificates will earn an interest rate of 8.1% from April 1st as against 8.5% at present. A five-year monthly income account will fetch 7.8% as opposed to 8.4% now. The girl-child savings scheme Sukanya Samridhi account will see interest rate of 8.6% as against 9.2%. Senior citizen savings scheme of five years would earn 8.6% interest compared to the current 9.3%.
And in other news now, Delhi's Patiala House Court uh, granted interim bail to JNU students Umar Khalid and Anir Ban Bhattacharya. The two were arrested in a sedition case last month after a controversial event on the campus on February 9th. Additional sessions judge Ritesh Singh granted the bail and directed both accused to furnish 25,000 rupees as surety amount. Umar and Anir Ban had sought bail on the ground of uh, parity with the co-accused uh, JNUSU President Kanaya Kumar who got bail in the case this month. Aljad community leaders extended the deadline on considering their demand for reservations till the 3rd of April. This came after lengthy meetings with state government officials, including the DGP and the Haryana Chief Secretary. After the meeting, Jat leaders described the attitude of the state officials as extremely cooperative and helpful to their cause. Here's a detailed report. Union Home Minister Rajnath Singh on Friday allayed fears over the possible renewal of the quota agitation by Jats in Haryana. Hoping for an early solution, Rajnath Singh called up Haryana Chief Minister Manohar Lal Khattar to take stock of the situation. A 72-hour ultimatum to the Haryana government by the Jats to address their demands ended on Thursday. They said they will announce their plan after meeting the Haryana Chief Secretary and Director General of Police. The state government blocked internet services in Haryana's Rohtak and Sonipat districts as precautionary measures against possible violence in the state. सरकार का निश्चय है ये हरियाणा सरकार का के विधेयक लेके आएंगे उसकी तैयारी भी वो कर रहे हैं और आज जो जाट आरक्षण से संबंधित संस्थाएं हैं उनको बुला के उनसे भी सलाम मशवरा किया जा रहा है और इसके अच्छे परिणाम होंगे The center sent 8000 paramilitary personnel to be deployed in five sensitive districts flag marches were also carried out to instill confidence among the people Around 300 paramilitary personnel are also deployed at the Munak Canal that supplies water to Delhi. 30 people were killed in the widespread violence in the state last month in the first phase of the agitation. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha Television. Meanwhile, the centre is unlikely to intervene in the ongoing dispute between Punjab and Haryana on sharing of water through Sutlej Yamuna Link Canal after Haryana Congress's uh, demand for intervention. Home Ministry has clarified, saying the governor has adequate constitutional options to resolve the issue. Amid raging controversy over the Satlaj Yamuna Canal link, Punjab refuses to compromise over the water sharing row with neighbouring Haryana by passing a unanimous resolution. Punjab Chief Minister Parkar Singh Badal, who is the leader of the House, moved a resolution in the Assembly saying that his state is facing crisis of water and does not even have one drop to share with others. The House has passed a resolution this morning. Uh, in which all the political parties of the state have unanimously uh, resolved that uh, circumstances being what they are, uh, the SYL canal cannot be built and they cannot allow it to be built in defiance of the uh, rights of the state over its river waters. Uh, as you're aware that the, uh, the, the petition filed by the state government challenging the Article 78 on the government of India's power to distribute water between the states is still pending before the Supreme Court. The Pradhan Mantri Narendra Modi ki sarkar hai desh mein, unhi ki sarkar hai Punjab mein aur unhi ki sarkar hai Haryana mein, un tino ko saath baith kar ke ek nirnay dono raj ke janta ke hitwa karna chahi. Supreme Court ne ek apni istiti rakhi hai aur baatchit se iska rasta niklega. A delegation of the Haryana Congress called on the President on Friday evening. They appraised Pranam Mukherjee of the situation arising out of the Punjab government's decision on Satlaj Yamuna Link Canal. The Haryana Congress has demanded President's rule in Punjab. federal structure 
साबित हो सकता है इसी वास्ते राष्ट्रपति जी से कल मिले थे हमने उनसे निवेदन किया था कि दोनों प्रदेशों में राष्ट्रपति शासन लगाया जाए क्योंकि कुछ ऐसे बातें आ रही हैं जो संघीय ढांचे पर जो है सवाल या निशान उठा रहे हैं वो देश के हित में नहीं है However the Supreme Court has directed maintenance of status quo on land meant for the canal after Haryana alleged that the efforts were made to level the land the delegation urged Mukherjee to save SYL canal saying that this is the lifeline of Haryana Bureau report Rajya Sabha TV Well it's time for a short break now but on the other side we'll bring you up to date with all the international news stay tuned we'll be right back But these non-tuberculous bacteria, they cannot cause disease. T cells plays a cardinal cardinal role in protection against tuberculosis. Means leprosy and tuberculosis, they are uh, like cousins. Leprosy is a, a disease which is not communicable unless until you touch a scar. Watch Eureka with Dr. J N Agrawala, Chief Scientist, CSIR IMT, Chandigarh, only on Rajya Sabha TV. Hello and welcome. I'm Amit Anshara. You're watching Constitutionally Yours. अपने को express करने के स्वतंत्रता बहुत ज़्यादा precious right. फ्रीडम का अर्थ ये नहीं है कि किसी के डिफेमेशन तक जाए हम राष्ट्र दोहो तक जाए क्या जातिगत आरक्षण सही है जब तक सोसाइटी को सूट होने तक है तब तक वो बात ठीक है यदि सोसाइटी को सूट नहीं होता है तो हमको कानून बदलना ही पड़ेगा जॉइन अस एज वी ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड कंटेम्प्रेरी इश्यूज रिलेटेड टू द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन वॉच कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनली योर्स ऑन राज्यसभा टेलीविजन Gyan Chopper is the ancient version of Indian snakes and ladders. This intriguing game was popular among the old, the young and the rulers as well. The chopper has its origin in the Jain philosophy. It tells the story of virtue. Each square in turn also narrates some message of wisdom. Welcome back. You're watching Rajya Sabha Television. Now let's take a quick check on the election-related stories this morning. Well, five special teams led by chief electoral officers of different states started a five-day visit to the districts of West Bengal on Friday. This uh, to see the overall poll preparedness till 27, 22nd March. The teams will submit their report on the 23rd of March. The first phase of the six-phase assembly poll in the state will be held on the 4th and 11th of April. Assam Gana Parishad uh, released its poll manifesto on Friday the AGP which is in alliance with the BJP promised constitutional protection for the indigenous people of Assam this includes administrative reforms creating employment and improving health and education facilities the party said it wants more power for the states by decentralizing departments other than external affairs and finance While modifying its May 2015 order the Supreme Court allowed publication of photographs of chief ministers governors as well as cabinet and state ministers in public advertisements the verdict came on petitions by center and states including poll bound West Bengal and Tamil Nadu the state sought review of the judgment that barred publication of leaders photos in advertisements except those of the president prime minister and the chief justice of india saying it infringed fundamental rights Well, as part of the BJP strategy to face the polls in Assam, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, West Bengal, and Puducherry, the party will use uh, uh, Modi government's achievements as what it called an additional weapon. BJP National Secretary H Raja said today that the center's achievements in the economic sector and financial inclusion schemes like Jandhan Atal Pension Yojana and uh, Mudra Bank will be advertised to win the elections. Well, here's a look at what's expected to make news during the course of the day today in our segment the day ahead. Vice President Mohammad Hamid Ansari will uh, today be the chief guest at the inaugural seminar on the role of editors in today's media. At a time when all eyes are on the media, the vice president will talk about the importance and the role of an editor in a media organization. 
Prime Minister Narendra Modi will today inaugurate the three-day Krishi Unnati Mela. The fair will provide information on new farm schemes and technologies that will help farmers double their income within the next few years. Besides addressing the farmers, Modi will also give away Krishi Karman awards to states and progressive farmers who have made outstanding contribution in the field of agriculture. Finance Minister Arun Jaitley will today inaugurate the Everlasting Flame International Program. The Ministry of Minority Affairs is organizing this event in coordination with the Ministry of Culture to celebrate multicultural ethos of the Parsi community. The program will consist of three exhibitions. Well, moving on to some international news that is just coming in now. A passenger jet has crashed in the southern Russian city of Rostov-on-Don. All 55 people and seven cabin crew members on board are feared dead. The Fly Dubai Boeing 738 coming from Dubai overshot the runway as it was landing at the airport. Reports suggest it bur burst into flames. The cause for the crash is still unknown, but poor visibility and uh, high winds could be a factor. Nearly 100 rescue workers are on the spot. The fire has been extinguished. All other flights have been diverted away from the airport. In some more international news now, Paris attack suspect Salah Abdeslam has been arrested by Belgian officials. Four others have also been taken into custody along with him. French President François Hollande said he expected Abdeslam to be extradited to France at the earliest. Meanwhile, U.S. President Barack Obama called Belgian and French leaders and congratulated them. Here's more. Salah Abdeslam, the most wanted fugitive in the Paris terrorist attack, was arrested following a dramatic raid by Belgian police forces. Abdeslam was captured after a shootout in Brussels. He was on the run for nearly four months. Belgian officials said he is being held in a hospital with a slight leg injury. Munir Ahmed Alaj, another suspect on the wanted list, was also arrested along with him. Three members of a family accused of sheltering Abdeslam were also detained. Mesdames et Messieurs, je vous remercie pour votre présence ce soir. Il me revient de vous annoncer que nous avons arrêté Salah Abdeslam. Dans le cas de perquisitions qui sont liées aux enquêtes en lien avec les attentats de Paris du 13 novembre. European leaders lauded the arrest. French President François Hollande expressed hopes that Abdeslam will be extradited to France as soon as possible. He also said Abdeslam might have links with Syria and IS. Et nous nous apercevons, sans rentrer dans le détail de l'enquête, qu'ils sont beaucoup plus nombreux que ce que nous avions pu un moment penser et identifier. Et ce que je peux dire, c'est que partout, euh, en Belgique comme en France, le niveau de la menace est très élevé. The 26-year-old Abdeslam was born in Brussels. He lived in Molenbeek before the Paris attacks. Now the security officials will grill Abdeslam on Islamic State's plans and structures, his contacts in Europe and Syria, and support networks and finance. 130 people were killed in a series of coordinated terrorist attacks in Paris in November. Saleh Abdeslam is the only living suspect. Since all other identified attackers were killed, Abdeslam will be the key to understand what happened on November 13, 2015. Bureau report, Rajya Sipha TV. The EU-Turkey migrant deal agreed in Brussels on Friday has drawn flak from Amnesty International as it accused European leaders of doublespeak. The human rights charity organization said that the deal has failed to hide EU's determination to turn its back on a global refugee crisis. Under the new deal, migrants arriving in Greece will be sent back to Turkey if their asylum claim is rejected. And Ankara, in turn, will aid and political concessions. Now, Turkish Prime Minister Ahmet Davutoglu hailed the deal as historic. However, few initial concessions offered to Turkey have been watered down as some EU members expressed discontent over Turkey's human rights record. Some may think this agreement is a silver bullet. But the reality is more complex. It is just one pillar of the European Comprehensive Strategy and can work only if the other pillars are also implemented. This includes strengthening the EU's external borders, 
keeping the Western Balkans uh, route closed and getting back to Schengen. This is also an important agreement to deepen our relation, our accession process and relation. Of course, the most important aspect is visa liberalization. Since the admission process is starting, visa liberalization is a natural extension result of this readmission. And visa liberalization, we hope, will be uh, before uh, end of June. Well, here's a roundup now of the other international news in our world wrap. The UN Security Council today strongly condemned the recent ballistic missile launches by North Korea, terming nuclear tests as unacceptable. It said that the launches constituted a clear violation of UN Security Council resolutions. The UNSC meeting came weeks after Pyongyang test fired two medium range ballistic missiles. Former Park President Parvez Musharraf has left for Dubai on Friday for medical treatment. He left the country just two days after the country's top court lifted a ban on his travel abroad. Musharraf is being tried on treason and other charges in Pakistan. His lawyers had said that Musharraf needed urgent spinal treatment which was unavailable in Pakistan. The UN Special Envoy for Syria, Stefan de Mistura, on Friday said that the Syrian peace talks have made limited progress during the first week, but he expressed hopes to reach a minimum common platform within the coming week. Mistura had met both Syrian government officials and the opposition delegation on Friday. Meanwhile, on the ground in Syria, the US military confirmed that no Russian airstrikes have been reported after President Putin ordered the withdrawal of troops from the ground a few days ago. Well, it's time for another quick breather on the program. But on the other side, we'll bring you up to date with all the overnight sports news. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hello, I am Sean Russell. I'm Tracy Shilchi and you're watching News Tonight. Together with the team of our dedicated professionals from across various fields. This is Sham Sundar. Vishal Dahiya, Akhilesh Suman, Frank Pereira from Beijing, China, Kriti Mishra for Rajya Sabha Television. We bring to you the news that matters here on Rajya Sabha TV. Welcome back. You're watching Rajya Sabha Television. Well, arch rivals India and Pakistan will draw swords against each other at the Eden Gardens later in the evening in the ICC World T20 Tournament. India convincingly beat Pakistan in the Asia Cup encounter a fortnight ago and Pakistan will be keen to extract sweet revenge against Dhoni's men. The stage is set for a keen contest between the two teams. Here's the match preview. Setting a high-octane momentum once again, one of the most famous rivalries in cricket are all set to meet at Eden Gardens. Whenever India and Pakistan battle it out against each other, it's always bigger, better and much more than just what's on display. Going by the figures, Team India might be strong on all counts, but despite gaining the tournament's favourite tag, they will be under tremendous pressure having suffered a humiliating defeat in their first match against New Zealand. Dhoni has got every bullet in his armoury, be it batting or bowling. It's probably bigger than Ashes is. So, uh, as far as Indians go and the Pakistanis go, they, they play. They, I don't think they watch this game as a game of cricket. It's, uh, it's more of a border rivalry. Uh, they want to get one up on each other, so there is much more to the particular game in itself rather than the game itself taking centre stage. So, as far as people are concerned, they put their emotions into the game. Uh, it's, as, it's For the players, it's trying keeping the emotions aside and trying and playing the game the best way we can. While Pakistan would want to break the jinx of not being able to defeat India in World Cup so far, unlike India, Pakistan began its Super 10 campaign on a positive note, beating Bangladesh by 55 runs. Pakistan has a decent lineup, one that India needs to be wary of. We've got a pace attack who can, who can change game with one spell or one good over. Uh, so I think we, we're going to take this as a, as a, as a, as a positive sign. Uh, pitch is really good, I must say that. Uh, but yeah, we've got, we got a good bowling attack. We need, we need runs on the board, I guess. 
What lands in Pakistan's favour is that they have never lost a limited overs international match against India in Kolkata. They have played four one-day internationals against India and have won all of them at the Eden Gardens. However, it will be interesting to see if Pakistan can break the World Cup jinx against India. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Well, at the ICC World T20 Tournament, England and New Zealand won their respective matches played against their opponents, Shots South Africa and Australia, on Please. Friday. England sensationally chased down a record target to 230 to stun South Africa by two wickets. Joe Root scored 83 runs, hitting four fours and four sixes in his 44-ball knock as England finished on 230 for eight with two balls to spare after the Proteas made 229 for four. It was the highest successful chase in the T20 World Cup and the second highest successful run chase by any team in the history of the shortest format of the game. Quinton de Kock, Hashim Amla and JP Dumini made half centuries as South, as South Africa posted 229 for four after England won the toss and elected to field first. Straight down the ground. Meanwhile, New Zealand too pulled off a remarkable eight-run victory over its neighbour Australia as they continued their impressive run in the World T20. Chasing a score of 142 for eight, Usman Khawaja gave Australia a fast start, but his run-out combined with some wonderful bowling from Ish Sodhi and Mitchell Santner choked Australia. In the end, New Zealand won by eight runs to ensure they stayed on top of the table. And he's on his way back to the... Uh, has he got enough? No, he's caught. Brilliantly caught. Well, here's a roundup of the other sports news in our sports beat. World number 12 PV Sindhu crashed out of the Swiss Open Grand Prix Gold Badminton Tournament. Two time world championship bronze medalist Sindhu lost 13 21 15 21 to He Bing Zhao of China in the women's singles quarterfinals. Meanwhile, Sena Nehwal and HS Pranoy entered the quarterfinals of the tournament. Nehwal saw off Christina Gavin Holt of Czech Republic 21-18-21-17. 13 seed Pranoy prevailed over 6 seeded Rajiv Osef of uh, England 21-13-21-12 to set up a clash with the 16 seed Tanong Sak of Thailand in the men's singles. Both seed Rafael Nadal booked a place in the semi-finals of the BNP Paribas Open. Nadal defeated his Japanese opponent Ki Nishikori 6-4, 6-3. The Spanish left-hander, a three-time champion at Indian Wells, will next meet top-seeded Serb Novak Djokovic, who battled past Frenchman Jo Wilfried Songa 7-6, 7-6 in the last of the quarterfinals. Djokovic, the world number one and defending champion, improved his stellar record for the year to 21. Uh, to one as he seeks a fifth title at Indian Wells. Liverpool secured a quarter-final spot in the Europa League with a 1-1 draw against Manchester United to win the tie 3-1 on aggregate. Anthony Marshall's 32nd-minute penalty pegged Liverpool back at 2-1 on aggregate, but Philippe Coutinho's solo effort on the stroke of half-time meant United were knocked out of the Europe. Uh, Europa Cup for the first time by English opposition. Well, that's it on this edition of the Breakfast News. Have a good day.